Welcome to Geek Do-It-Yourself Mechanic. The purpose of this video is to discuss OBD2 readiness monitors. From the home page, let us navigate to Knowledge, OBD2, Readiness Monitors. Before going into readiness monitors, let's discuss why you should care about them. If you live in a state where all cars on the road must be emissions legal, you will benefit from knowing about readiness monitors. I live in California, so all cars on the road must be carb smog legal. In addition, you cannot sell a car unless it passes a smog check. This is, this is where the readiness monitors come into the picture. As part of the smog test, unless all the readiness monitors have executed completely and correctly, a smog certificate will not be issued. We will briefly discuss OBD2 and then follow up with discussing readiness monitors. In response to the Clean Air Act of 1970, the government started to define and enforce emission standards and maintenance requirements for vehicles. To meet these new standards, car manufacturers created their own OBD-1 implementations using computers, sensors, and actuators. The EPA and Society of Automotive Engineers SAE, worked together to produce the OBD-2 standard. In January, January 1996, this standard was adopted by the EPA and CARB, California Air Resources Board. OBD-2 compliant cars utilize a powertrain control module commonly referred to as PCM. There are many other names as well. ECM, so forth and so on. This controller is constantly monitoring and regulating the car's engine to ensure emission standards are met. The PCM leverages additional systems to help reduce tailpipe emissions and to help to reduce the venting of vapors to the atmosphere. As part of the OBD2 standard, these systems contain devices that must be tested periodically by the PCM to ensure they are functioning. If these devices fail certain health checks, a designated diagnostic trouble code DTC will be set and the check engine light will be illuminated. Let's discuss some commonly used systems and components to meet the OBD2 standard. To reduce nitrogen oxide emissions, exhaust gas is recirculated into the intake to reduce combustion temperatures. The system responsible for this is called the EGR system. To reduce carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxide emissions, one or more catalytic converters, which resemble a muffler in appearance, are installed right after the exhaust manifold to process the exhaust gases before they are sent out the tailpipe. A catalytic converter leverages a reduction catalyst to reduce nitrogen oxide emissions and uses an oxidation catalyst to help burn and react with the remaining gases to reduce carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons. To help the catalytic converter be as efficient as possible, oxygen sensors and or air fuel sensors are leveraged to sample the exhaust gases. The PCM constantly is constantly reading these sensors and adjusting the amount of fuel injected into the engine so that the air fuel ratio 
in the exhaust stream is 14.7 to 1, which is commonly referred to as the stoichiometric ratio. This ratio allows the catalytic converter to work most efficiently without damage. To reduce hydrocarbons from fuel vapors, the fuel system is sealed so that an evaporative system can capture and then return captured vapors to the engine to burn. This system is named the evaporative system, commonly called EVAP. Let's discuss readiness monitors now. For the PCM to ensure these components, which I just discussed, are working as they should, the PCM utilizes readiness monitors. The following monitor explanations are simplified due to the following. Each manufacturer has implemented them in a unique way. The actual imp implementation has many details. The standards are always being changed to help decrease po uh, pollution. Manufacturers are free to add additional enhanced monitors, for example, ABS, airbags, so forth and so on. Lastly, algorithms are constantly improved. Let's go through some of the very common monitors that you're more likely to encounter with your vehicle. If you look at a high level through this table, if you look at this column to the right, you'll see some are constantly being executed. The PCM is continuously looking for these uh, and executing these monitors to look for these issues. Some are, are only checked when certain driving conditions are met. Let's talk about the first one, misfire. At a high level, a misfire is when a specific one or more cylinders is not functioning as it should and therefore isn't producing the power as it should. So maybe it's not no spark, or not enough fuel, too much fuel, uh, compression is, is poor, or many other things. But anyway, it's looking for a misfire, and the reason that's so important is a misfire could be releasing a lot of fuel, unburnt fuel to the catalytic converter, which would then burn that up and then would therefore make the overall system uh, not meet the EPA standard. Let's look at the algorithm real quick. At a high level, the PCM uh, utilizes the crank sensor uh, to monitor the power generated by each cylinder when it fires. So it looks for a specific, uh, you could say, uh, number of uh, sawtooth patterns in a certain time frame right after the cylinder fires to, do to ensure it's generating the appropriate amount of power. It's contributing equally. Now, from my experience, uh, sometimes the misfires it, it's hard to detect the exact cylinder it does a good job some some PCM uh, designers do a really good job others not so much but nonetheless they all do capture when a misfire occurs fuel system uh, ensuring that uh, the appropriate pressure and the appropriate amount of fuel is being uh, introduced into each cylinder so that the 14.7 to 1 uh, air fuel ratio is achieved. Remember this ratio allows the catalytic converter to uh, operate most effectively. So in the general algorithm is that the air fuel sensors or the O2 sensors are monitored uh, to ensure they are responding correctly. So maybe the PCM will add a little extra fuel, make sure it goes rich. Maybe it'll intentionally allow it to go low. Um, generally, it doesn't change that. It looks for certain conditions like decelerating to make sure it, it goes lean. When you accelerate, it should go rich. Things like that. 
It also has a comprehensive component monitor. Again, that's a continuous one. What that is is checking all the monitors, or I'm sorry, all the sensors and actuators through the system. Um, to go in more depth, those will be in all fall in more follow-up discussion and maybe out there already. But for example, it makes sure the math sensor is is uh, giving input, um, and the input is reasonable compared to the other values, uh, like the map sensor compared against the map sensor to ensure you know that doesn't quite make sense. Why well, I'm under vacuum, but I'm getting let's say. Uh, full, th uh, full uh, throttle, wide open throttle amounts of uh, air coming in. So things like that. Catalyst. Um, this is making sure the catalytic converters are functioning. Um, some systems uh, will just use the O2 air fuel sensors to make sure the catalytic converter is. Uh, uh, are working and how that works is they install an air fuel sensor or an oxygen sensor before and an oxygen sensor after and it compares those two uh, sensors to ensure that the catalytic converter is uh, properly processing the uh, the exhaust stream. Uh, some e uh, computers use um, a temperature sensors uh, to make sure that the uh, Kelly converter is is warmer on the exit part because uh, remember it does uh, employ a reaction catalyst, therefore generating heat. It oxidizes some of the uh, compounds to make them more inert. Um, so that's where a temperature sensor would be helpful to make sure that it is being warmer on the output side as compared to the input side of the catalytic converter. Heated catalyst. So it's the catalytic converter, but again, it needs to be warm for it to do its job. So it employs heaters in it uh, to get the catalytic converter warm quicker. So in other words, when you start the car, um, the catalytic converter is cold, so it won't be as efficient. So the heater will reduce the time uh, required for the catalytic converter to get up to temperature so that it can do its job. evaporative system. Again, that's uh, capturing uh, the hydrocarbons, the fuel vapors when you're filling the car. As you're moving the gas, uh, the gas tank is generating vapors as the return lines from the fuel rail going back to the uh, uh, gas tank, it's going to obviously produce vapors. Uh, in the older cars, it used to release it. Uh, in modern cars, they capture it and uh, put it by via charcoal canisters and it's brought back into the intake manifold. Um, EVAP system utilizes uh, very low pressures and what they'll do is they'll use solenoids at the gas tank and the intake and close them when the uh, uh, so the as you're decelerating the the line will be under vacuum right because remember it's connected to your intake so it'll lock off both uh, solenoids and therefore it's trapping a vacuum and it uses a pressure sensor to ensure it holds that vacuum for a certain amount of time, um, ensuring there's no leaks. So you can have a low, medium, or high leak in your system. So that's what that monitor will do. Secondary air. Um, sometimes in larger displacement uh, engines, the catalytic converter needs help. So what the secondary air will do is uh, add more oxygen to help with the reactive catalyst portion of the uh, catalytic converter, allowing uh, it to burn uh, some more of the uh, exhaust gases. How we will test that is uh, uh, many times it'll you know use actuators to turn on, the, allow the pump to the, the air to enter the catalytic converter, and therefore um, the temperature of the catalytic converter should get warmer. So it can use that or use other sensors to make sure the actuators are working. Again, it's implementation specific. O2, o, the O2 sensor. Again, these are the air fuel sensors used uh, to allow the engine, engine to properly uh, up maintain the 14.7 to 1 ratio. And it also these sensors are also used to ensure the catalytic converters efficiencies 
uh, catalytic converter could be multiple catalytic converters so it's testing as many as it, it, it can um, using these sensors so what it can do is ensure let's say you're decelerating that the uh, air fuel or O2 sensors go lean and if you're accelerating they should go rich so it's it's checking those out to make sure the O2 sensors are working correctly um, if they're not one could say the PCM is in the blind right it, it doesn't know the ratio and that's a very big deal to the PCM because if it doesn't maintain that ratio it can damage that catalytic converter and therefore not be able to clean up the emissions uh, out the tailpipe as it wanted. Oxygen center he heaters, oxygen sensor heaters. Analogous to the catalytic converter, uh, oxygen sensors also rely on, on heat. It's actually burning the exhaust gas to sample it. So the quicker that can get up to temperature, the quicker the system can get in closed loop and the PCM can get to that 14.7 to 1 uh, stoichiometric ratio to make sure the catalytic converters are working, so forth and so on. Lastly, uh, EGR, exhaust gas recirculation. What this what this system does again is it reintroduces uh, some of the exhaust gas back into the intake in hopes of lowering the uh, intake combustion temperatures, reducing the nitrogen oxides produced. Uh, the general algorithm to detect if this system is working is uh, it'll open up. Uh, therefore, uh, engine vacuum will be changed, right? If you think about it, it's taking exhaust gas, which is maybe atmospheric pressure, maybe even a little more psi, right? One or two psi generally, and the va and if they if he does it at I idle or just off idle, it's near vacuum. So by if it opens up an actuator, it can use the MAP sensor to ensure that the uh, pressure changes appropriately. Again, that changes by manufacturer. So we just went over uh, these monitors at a high level. These are common ones. There can be more, and some might not be uh, uh, available for your system. What's good, what you need to realize that these monitors, uh, their results, and if they've been executed, can be cleared at least two ways. One way is if you disconnect a battery for some time. Another is the scan tool can clear them. Remember, for you to be able to pass a smog test, they must be have been executed and executed successfully. For the monitors where a drive condition is, is needed, a certain driving condition needs to be met and those change based on manufacture. I included one here just to show you. This is uh, a GM OBD drive cycle. And if you just look at it, um, you'll see it's very specific. ECT, engine coolant, engine coolant temperature sensor, must be below 122 Fahrenheit. And that's when the uh, air purge, fuel trim, misfire, and the O2 sensor heaters are checked. You drive a little longer, um, the purge and misfire uh, monitors are executed. Um, you need to cruise at a steady state for at 55 miles an hour for three minutes, and then the air, EGR, fuel trim, O2, purge, misfire uh, monitors are ran, ran again. And then you'll see deceleration, and it's very specific. Clutch must be out and no brake. So if you think about that, so that means you're off the gas pedal, and that's maximum vacuum in the intake. And if you think about it, that would imply your O2 sensors are extremely lean. And that's why I would look for misfires, fuel trim, purge, things like that. And then you need to drive at a steady state uh, for f uh, at 55 miles an hour for five minutes and decel with no braking. So they're very specific. Um, what I suggest is you're having issues uh, getting one of your readiness monitors to execute, I suggest looking in your shop manual. And I'm using uh, uh, Mitchell, Mitchell Do It Yourself Online, and I'm currently looking at a 2000 Volkswagen uh, Passat GLX, and I, I thought I'd show you 
what they look like uh, online. So I go to repair. I'm going to type in readiness and drive cycles and uh, OBD2 drive cycles. And in here you'll see where they'll give you some examples of what you need to do for your specific readiness monitors or your tests to run. I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I've had to explain readiness monitors to to many people, so that is why I created this video on uh, this uh, video, and I hope it's uh, useful for you. Thank you for watching. I hope you found the information helpful.